He said, فَمَنْ تَرَكَ عِبَادَةَ الرَّحْمَانِ وَبْتُلِيَ بِعِبَادَةِ الْأَوْثَانِ He said, the one who fails to worship Allah will end up worshipping idols. If you don't worship Allah, you will end up worshipping idols. What are the modern idols that we have today? Secularism, that's an idol, okay? Liberalism is an idol. Feminism is an idol. Modern items, I, I, idols, humanism, scientism, all of these isms are the new idols of today. If you don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will become someone who worship, sh worships what? Liberalism. You will worship feminism. You will be worshipping humanism. You will be worshipping scientism. This is what's going to happen. Look at what this great imam has said. That's what's happening to so many people right now. They're worshipping new idols. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا ولقد أنزلنا إليك آيات بينات وما يكفر بها إلا الفاسقون أو كلما عاهدوا عهدا نبذه فريق منهم بل أكثرهم لا يؤمنون ولما جاءهم رسول من عند الله مصدق لما معهم نبذ فريق من الذين أوتوا الكتاب كتاب الله وراء ظهورهم كأنهم لا يعلمون واتبعوا ما تتل الشياطين على ملك سليمان وما كفر سليمان ولكن الشياطين كفروا يعلمون الناس السحر وما أنزل على الملكين بباب هاروت وماروت وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقولا إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر فيتعلمون منهما ما يفرقون به بين المرء وزوجه وما هم بضارين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله ويتعلمون ما يضرهم ولا ينفعهم ولقد علموا لمن اشتراه ما له في الآخرة من خلاق ولبئس ما شروا به أنفسهم لو كانوا يعلمون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أولا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون إنا لله ما أخذ وله ما أعطى وكل شيء عنده لأجل مسمى and dear brothers and our uncle our sheikh sheikh Abdul Wahab and uh, he has lost his brother uh, here in the UK in London نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يغفر له وأن يرحمه وأن يدخله الجنة الفردوس العلا اللهم آمين and please pass your condolences to him uh, after the lesson إن شاء الله تعالى as you know, Uncle Abdul Wahab, he's a, he's a pillar of our masjid and our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and his family with sabr. Allahumma ameen. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, dear brothers, and we will be continuing with our, uh, inshallah ta'ala, journey in Surah, uh, surah Al-Baqarah. And subhanallah, wallahi, the Quran continues to amaze you all the time. Subhanallah, every day you are learning something new. You are taken for another journey and alhamdulillah for the past few days or couple of weeks we were dealing with 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 understanding uh, the people of banu israel and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions and the muslims in general who these people were subhanallah if you ever want to know who the yahud are just go back to surah al-baqarah because no one knows them better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ya'lamu man khalaqa wa huwa al-latifu al-khabir. 
Subhanallah. No one knows better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, he knows his creation better than anybody else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who has created the children of Israel and he knows them better than anyone else. He was the one who has sent them the books. He was, he was the one who has sent them the messengers and, and the prophets. And he knows them better than anybody any, anyone else. He knows them better than anyone else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has continued in Surah Al-Baqarah and said, وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ Ya Muhammad, we have revealed to you ayat which are very clear, signs which are really, really clear. وَمَا يَكْفُرُ بِهَا إِلَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ Those people who will disbelieve what we have given you are the fasiqun. Okay, they, no one else is going to deny what was given to you, Ya Muhammad. This Quran that was given to you, the miracle that was given to you, and no one would really say no to, except the only person who would say no to this Quran or the signs that we have given you are the fasiqun, those who have rebelled against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he continued Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, how is it that whenever they make a covenant or a pledge, some of them throw it away? In fact, most of them do not believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, these people, they, they go, they, they, they make a covenant and pledge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and many of them after that, they throw this away. Subhanallah, they break that promise, or the pledge, or the covenant. And let us listen to and uh, what uh, Imam al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala has said. He said, Awa ahadu ahdan minhum. He said, this is an expression of astonishment at how often they made covenants but did not have the patience to fulfill them. The phrase, Awa kulla ma ahadu, he has said, is an indicative of something that happened repeatedly. Every time they made a covenant, the outcome was that they broke it. What was the reason for that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us. The reason was that most of them did not believe. That was the reason. Most of them did not believe. Because if they had true iman, they would have, be, they would have been like the companions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about them. مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا عَهَدُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ Okay, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, among the believers are men who have been true to their covenant with Allah. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, like uh, Imam al-Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned in his tafsir, he said, قَالَ مُحَمَّدِ بْنُ إِسْحَاقِ لَمَّا ذَكَرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم سُلَيْمَانِ فِي الْمُرْسَلِينَ قَالَ بَعْضُ أَحْبَارِهِمْ يَزْعُمُ محمد يَزْعُمُ مُحَمَّدٌ أَنَّ بْنَ دَاوُدْ كَانَ نَبِيًّا وَاللَّهِ مَا كَانَ إِلَّا سَاحِرًا سبحان الله سبحان الله نعوذ بالله Do you know when, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them among the messengers or the prophets Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has sent was Sulaiman some of the some of the uh, rabbis of Medina that time what did they say? They have said Muhammad is claiming that the son of Dawood meaning Sulaiman Alayhi Salam was a prophet and they said by Allah the son of Dawood Sulaiman he was not a prophet he was just a magician no one is safe from them a prophet they would go to the extent of killing a prophet nowadays we complain and say why are these people killing innocent people why are they taking innocent, the lands of innocent people you should not be surprised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning everything in the Quran subhanallah they said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you are claiming that Sulaiman is a prophet and let us tell you what we believe regarding Sulaiman. Sulaiman was not a prophet, he was just a magician, a sorcerer. That's it. Wallahi ma kana illa sahira. That's what they said. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this ayah. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينَ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that. What did Allah say subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah? They followed what the shayateen. Because when they have thrown, the book Allah has given them, which was Torah, what did they do to that book? They threw that book behind their backs. And what are they going to take right now? They're going to take what the shayateen will be teaching them. And what will the shayateen teach them? The shayateen will teach them magic. What did, they, what did Allah say? They followed what shaitan gave out. In the lifetime, what the shaitan 
devils gave out falsely of the magic in the lifetime of Suleiman. Suleiman did not disbelieve, but the shayateen disbelieved, teaching men magic and such things that came down at Babylon in the two angels, Harut and Marut. But neither of these two angels taught anyone such things till they, till they had said to them, we are only for trial. So disbelieve not by learning this magic from us. I want to share with you today, subhanAllah, some words that are really powerful that was said by Imam As-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala in his tafsir. He said, وَلَمَّا كَانَ مِنَ الْعَوَائِدِ الْقَدَرِيَّةِ مِنَ الْعَوَائِدِ الْقَدَرِيَّةِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ الْإِلَهِيَّةِ أَنَّ مَنْ تَرَكَ مَا يَنْفَعُ وَأَمْكَنَهُ الْإِنْتِفَاعُ بِهِ فَلَمْ يَنْتَفِعُ اُبْتُلِيَ بِالِاشْتِغَالِ بِمَا يَضُرُّهُ Subhanallah. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what, what this great imam of this mufassir has said. He said, it is a regular part of Allah's decree, which is based on divine wisdom. That if a person forsakes, if, if a person forsakes that which might have been benefited, which might have benefited him, and he was able to benefit from it, but did not, what will happen? Then he will be caused to deal with that which is harmful to him. If you don't take what is going to benefit you, you will be caused to what? Take things that will harm you. Subhanallah. And let us continue with what he said. He said, فَمَنْ تَرَكَ عِبَادَةَ الرَّحْمَانِ أُبْتُلِيَ بِعِبَادَةِ الْأَوْثَانِ If someone, he said, the one who fails to worship Allah will end up worshipping idols. If you don't worship Allah, you will end up worshipping idols. What are the modern idols that we have today? Secularism. That's an idol. Okay? Liberalism is an idol. Feminism is an idol. Modern items, I, I, idols. Humanism, scientism, all of these isms are the new idols of today. If you don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will become someone who worships, worships what? Liberalism. You will worship feminism. You will be worshipping humanism. You will be worshipping scientism. This is what's going to happen. Look at what this great imam has said. فَمَنْ تَرَكَ عِبَادَةَ الرَّحْمَانِ أُبْتُلِيَ بِعِبَادَةِ الْأَوْثَانِ That's what's happening to so many people right now. They're worshiping new idols. And subhanAllah, look at the next statement the Imam has made. He said, وَمَنْ تَرَكَ مَحَبَّةَ اللَّهِ وَخَوْفَهُ وَرَجَاءَهُ أُبْتُلِيَ بِمَحَبَّةِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ وَخَوْفِهِ وَرَجَاءِهِ He said, the one who fails to love fear and put his hope in Allah will end up loving, fearing, and putting his hope in something other than Allah. Yes. People today, they love what they have. Some people love humanism, some people love uh, liberalism, some people they put their hope in, liber in liberalism, for example, or feminism. Allah, look what the shaykh said. If you leave, if you, if you forsake the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his fear and his hope, what will happen? You will have love for something else, you will have fear for something else, and you will hope something else. Okay, you'll have your hopes, you'll put your hope in something else. And then look what else has he has said. وَمَن لَمْ يُنْفِقْ مَا لَهُ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ أَنْفَقَهُ فِي طَاعَةِ الشَّيْطَانِ He said, the one who fails to spend his wealth in obedience to Allah will spend it in disobedience to the shaitan. Do you know the, the people that we live with here right now in this, in this country, for example, how often, subhanAllah, they working during the week like a donkey. And the money that they earn at the end of the week, what do they do? They spend it in partying. That's it. They get money and all they use that money for what? Is to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more and more. Subhanallah. If you don't give your wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll give it for the sake of the shaitan. Subhanallah. That money is not going to stay. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُنْفِقْ مَا لَهُ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ If you don't spend your wealth in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how are you going to spend it? فِي طَاعَةِ الشَّيْطَانِ In the obedience of the shaitan. You'll be partying day and night. You'll be spending your money in haram stuff. And then he said, وَمَنْ تَرَكَ الذُّلَّ لِرَبِّهِ أُبْتُلِيَ بِالذُّلِّ لِلْعَبِيدِ Subhanallah. He said, the one who fails to show humility towards his Lord will end up being humiliated by other people. Look at how human beings have been humiliated right now. We are being told, we live in a world, subhanallah, where we are being told we have to believe that we have more than two genders. <laughs> yes, people are, yeah, yeah. You have professors, people who are considered to be highly educated in the society, who are teaching people pathetic things and saying, you need to know that there are more than two genders. Subhanallah. This is the world that we live in. You will be humiliated 
سبحان الله ومن ترك الذل لربه ابتلي للعبيد and then he said ومن ترك الحق ابتلي بالباطل he said the one who fails to follow the truth will end up following falsehood and look at society what's happening to them right now we are following falsehood so many people right now they are following things that are absolutely based upon falsehood Subhanallah. And this is what, what happened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala said, كَذَلِكَ هَؤُلَا إِلْيَهُودِ لَمَّا لَمَّا نَبَدُوا كِتَابَ اللَّهِ اتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينَ He said, thus these Yehudis, the Shaykh said, these Yehudis followed what the devils used to read of the books of magic during the reign of Sulaiman. These devils brought magic to people and claimed that Sulaiman used to use it and achieved great power by means so of it. By means of it. But they were lying. Sulaiman did not use magic. Rather, Allah declared him to be innocent of that. And he said, وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا It was not Sulaiman who disbelieved by learning magic, but it was who, who has learned the magic. It was, and rather the devils disbelieved by doing that. Dear brothers, inshallah ta'ala, today I need to touch upon, inshallah ta'ala, uh, the following points. Because as an imam, I know what is going on sometimes within our communities. People come, people are suffering from, for example, uh, jinn possession or satanic possession. Sometimes people come and say, Ya Sheikh, I feel that I'm suffering from black magic. Okay, so we need to touch upon this. And there are many Muslims who use these things today. For example, if someone wants to control somebody else, they will go to a magician and they will ask the magician to do black magic on, on that particular person. Sometimes members of the same family will do it to one another. Subhanallah. I came across where, 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 where a young man came to me in a masjid and said to me, I believe my parents put magic on me. Subhanallah. The number of women who call and say like, I think my in-laws have put magic on me, put magic spell on me, or maybe my husband has done something to me, or husband saying that maybe my wife has done something to me or her family. That's, uh, we don't have figures for that. It's just too much. Okay. But let me tell you this now. Okay. The signs of jinn or satanic possession. What are these? For example, these are the, follow the signs, like if somebody is actually possessed by shaitan or not. Strong repulsion when hearing the Quran and Adhan. So if somebody, how would you know if someone has been possessed by shaitan? When they hear the Quran and the Adhan is too much for them. They will, they, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will actually show and express so much repulsion when they hear the Quran and, and the Adhan. For example, episodes of losing consciousness. The person will become unconscious sometimes. Frequent nightmares during the night. If you have frequent nightmares, that, that, that's a sign. Also, tendency to avoid people, okay? Accompanied by out of the norm behavior. The jinn who possesses him might speak when, Quran, when the Quran is recited for the possessed person. Also, sometimes madness. These are the signs that you will see in someone if he's possessed by the shaitan. What about the signs of black magic? How would someone know that black, uh, they, they have been kind of like affected by black magic, for example? And dislike of ones, for example, this is one sign, dislike of ones spouse, as indicated in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say in this ayah? And, and, and the, from, from these angels, people learned by which they cause separation between a man and his wife. For example, a wife might go to a magician and say to, uh, to him, I don't want my husband to marry another wife. I want you to do a black magic on him. So he only loves me and never ever falls in love with another wife or another woman. That happens. Sometimes a man will say, I don't want my wife, I want you to do magic on her. So we are separated from each other. Subhanallah. Also, inability. This, another, another one is, another sign is the following. A different attitude in the house from that which is outside. Sometimes a man when he's outside, he has so much love for his family. But as soon as he gets home, he dislikes them. Subhanallah. He was missing them when he was outside, but when he goes home, he hates them. That's another sign. Inability to have sexual intercourse with one's spouse. If you can't have sex with your wife, this is another problem. This could be a sign that there's a black magic done on you. Also, frequent miscarriages for pregnant women. This is another sign. Sudden change in behavior without obvious reason. 
Okay, complete loss of appetite for food could be another sign. Thinking or imagining one has done something when in reality one has not. Sometimes you might imagine you've done something, but in reality you haven't done it. So these are the signs of, of knowing if there is a black magic done on someone, for example. How to protect ourselves. This is very important. How do we protect ourselves from this stuff? Number one, putting one's trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sincere belief that he is the only cure for everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the only cure for everything. Also, reading the Quran and known supplications. For example, reading Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Okay, Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Remember, when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, was, uh, when black magic was done to the Prophet ﷺ, these are the two surahs that he has recited, or the two angels have recited on the Prophet ﷺ, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed the magic from the Prophet ﷺ. So that, that was one. Also, reciting and uh, the, the other, Surah Al-Ikhlas is recommended as well. Also, reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, and also reciting and also, and what, what else you can do is reciting and to cure black magic, some have successfully used and seven load tree leaves as well. The leaves should be crushed, then mixed with water, enough for taking a bath. The following verses from the Quran are then recited. What, what are the ayat that you need to recite in them? Ayat al-Kursi, Surah al-Kafirun, and Surah to and then mention of the magic, okay, and which mentioned the magic, which are also the other ayat that you're going to read is Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 102, the ayah we just recited. This ayah is an ayah that you recite. How often when we were reciting Quran on someone who was possessed by shaitan or sah, for example, when this ayah is recited, the person reacts. This is a very powerful ayah. The, if someone has sihr has done to the person, the jinn is there, he will definitely react to it. It's very difficult. He can't, he can't take it. These ayat as like, like a, it's more severe to them than, the, than a missile. Subhanallah. Ayat al Suratul Araf, Ayah 117 to Ayah 119. Surah to Yunus, which is Surah number 10, 79 to 82. Surah to Taha, which is Surah to 20, 65 to 69. Okay, the possessed person drinks some of the water and the rest is used to give him a bath. Also, removing the elements of magic as well. And eating seven. As, and uh, for example, and date, the dates of Medina al ajwa also cupping, uh, removing excess uh, blood and offering supplications. These are the ways that we can protect ourselves from black magic. So dear brothers, inshallah ta'ala, as you can see, alhamdulillah, our Fajr reflection takes us to different places. And this morning we've talked about the danger of black magic. And remember, studying sihr or going and believing the, the sorceress is a very major sin, is a big, big sin, a major, major sin. As a Muslim, you must stay away from sihr, from magic, and also the magicians. Stay away from them, stay away from them, subhanallah. Okay, stay away from them, and seek Allah's protection from them as well. Remember, anyone can be, black magic can be used against anybody. Okay, but ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from this. Always read your morning, morning supplications, your adhkar, morning after Salatul Fajr, and also in the evening, make sure that you do that. Stay in tahara as much as, much as possible, inshallah ta'ala. Always when you are inside the house, outside of the house, always make sure that you've got your wudu, read your adhkar all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah will protect you, and inshallah ta'ala, your family. And recite Surah Al-Baqarah in that, House regularly, regularly, Surah Al Baqarah should be recited in your house, be in the Ta'ala, and Allah will protect you. Jazakumullah khairan for your patience, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the shaitan and his evil and those who are with him. Barakallahu feekum, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.